G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope that you are super well. Today we're going to talk about, I think, what is a pretty exciting industry release worthy of being outside of the weekly news cycle, and that is that Canon has launched a 19 megapixel global sensor. Now, this in some ways is not that different to the 24 megapixel global sensor we've seen with the A93, and of course, some of the sensors that we're seeing with Nikon Red Global, where we have, for example, the 6K Komodo, which is a super 35 mil sensor. What's interesting about these sensors is they're all around similar resolutions. The one thing that is different about this new Canon announcement and the way that they're marketing it is not for commercial camera usage, is that it is a 12-bit readout sensor not a 14-bit sensor like we see in the A93. And when it comes to red, well, they are talking 16-bit. But what's really interesting about this is the 19 megapixels, it's very close to the 24 megapixels when you actually talk about the number of pixels across. Sony is around 6,000 pixels and this camera is coming in, I think, at 5,700. So we're only talking about it being 300 pixels shorter. This actually makes the photo sites larger, which in theory means that they can collect more light. And it can run at almost 60 frames per second at almost 6K. Whereas the A93 can't do that, it runs for video at 4K, but it runs faster, up to 120 frames per second. What we're seeing here though is trading the specs one way or another, these sensors aren't that different, like I said, except for the 12-bit versus the 14-bit. But the interesting thing to me is this is just a sensor. It's been released for general consumption. Anybody can buy it and anybody can use it. That's the idea behind this sensor. So it's in the public domain. And thus, what I find interesting out of this announcement, this development and this launch is that Canon has this technology in their back pocket. And this is the technology that they're prepared to give to everybody. So what might be the tech that they're holding on for themselves? And thus, when you understand that, that this is sort of in some metrics more than the A93 sensor, in other metrics, it's a little bit less than the A93 sensor and what would it take for it to go from say being 12 bit to 14 bit and we already know from a video perspective that it can capture more resolution record it and save it and that all kind of comes down to the camera pipeline heating storage and all of those sorts of questions ultimately i would say this sensor is near on and if not near on something like 90 to 95 percent of on average averaging out all of the spec of what the A93 is. Now, Sony obviously made a big fuss about bringing global to the market just three or four months ago, but here is something very similar. And of course, we know that RED was doing it and had done it before Sony with global on higher resolutions. And I could argue lower resolutions on a larger form factor is easier to do than higher resolutions on a smaller form factor because of heat, wiring, dissipation, and capacity to collect light. Ultimately, where this all lands is, is these three manufacturers, Red Nikon, Canon, and Sony, all within a very short space of time, just three or four months, have arrived at a very similar position, which is they've all got competent global. Now, as I said, this sensor, this, this launch, this announcement, that is the public facing information we have right now. And I also believe, to repeat, the difference between what this sensor is and what might be, say, for example, to create a 24 megapixel sensor, which is very similar to an A93. I don't think it's a big step from what we're seeing right here, right now. So what does this mean? I am confident that the R5 II will be more of what the R5 I is. They won't go backwards in resolution. But what we have seen is, is Canon are happy to make their flagship, which is what they did in the DSLR days, lower megapixels. And we see this with the R3. It is a lower megapixel camera. 
And thus is the launch of this new sensor, a 19 megapixel global sensor, a little bit of a tease, a little bit of a precursor to what we might see in the Canon R1. It's really hard to say, but I find it intriguing that this technology is, like we've said, 90, 95% in some metrics and higher in other metrics. Canon, well, they're close. And not only are they close, but they're announcing this publicly. And that to me is either, why are you doing that? Why are you telling the world where you're up to? Or why are you telling the world this is where you're up to because you've got more global coming soon? And quite frankly, if I was Canon and they haven't had a compelling flagship for a few years now, and of course the R3 was never considered the flagship from most people's perspective, at this point in time, there might be some Canon users that are getting a little bit weary of when a Canon gonna do something exciting and interesting next. So telegraphing that global is on the way in some shape or form, that might be partly what this is about. Otherwise, does this end up in some sort of video camera? Now, that is the sort of application that their launch video has. They talk about surveillance, they talk about drones, they talk about traffic control, but this is a pretty high quality sensor for that sort of application. And further to that, in this launch video, they're actually showing us normal people doing normal things. They're not on trains and they're not flying drones. They are actually, they're playing badminton to show the movement of the global shutter. They're rolling a fan and so on. Now there's an interesting thing in this video. If you look closely at the global footage, which shows the badminton racket not bending, you can actually still see the light flickering in the background. Global does not automatically mean you're going to solve that because you still have to get at the same frequency. So it doesn't just automatically go away. And that means if you have multiple frequencies in the frame and you try and match one, you can't necessarily match the other. So global doesn't necessarily solve that just by default. And we can see an example of that in this demo. Really interesting to me that they didn't pick that up themselves. Canon R1, is it gonna be a 24 megapixel global, 30 megapixel global? This sensor has a quite high pixel pitch and I absolutely believe that they could squeeze another three or 400 pixels on on the edge to get it up to being a 24 megapixel sensor matching what an A93 is. And well, they could potentially go further. Now, when it comes to 12-bit versus 14-bit, it's a little bit above my pay grade, but I suspect that is more about the processors on the sensor, the RAM and the speed that all that's running at, as opposed to the sensor's capacity to actually capture it. So everybody, I would love to know your thoughts below about this sensor. What does it mean when we're so close to 24, we're global, we're 12-bit instead of 14-bit, but we can shoot 6K instead of 4K? Are Canon toying with us? Are they sending us a signal? Or has this got nothing to do with anything? Who knows? But I think it's really, really interesting that Canon are in this space, Sony are in this space, Nikon are in this space. And we know Nikon was going into this space with some of their own patents anyway, but they've obviously fast forwarded into this space with active working technology that is actually field tested and highly regarded. Global sensors, red. As another little side bit of information, Canon has also released a 2.8, I think it was, or 2.9, somewhere around there, megapixel sensor, which has ultra high dynamic range. Now that's very low res, and they talk about it being able to be used for body cams or webcams, and, and that's actually a pretty good point. You do want high dynamic range in those sort of applications. And looking at the video, as we can see here, we can see the quality of it's not great. That is because it is two megapixels being blown up. And I also think this sensor is pushing really hard to be able to do this. This is not for photographic or filmmaking purposes. This is more for documenting information. These two sensors are available along with a third sensor from Canon. I do think there's interesting things to come. And of course, we know that Sony, Nikon, Canon, Fuji and others 
they don't stop working on this stuff. They've got departments that their specific role is to further what a sensor can do for us. And this technology, it just keeps marching on. And Canon has been pretty quiet at the high end of the spectrum of late. So it's time. All right, everybody, I'd love to know your thoughts on all of this. It's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I'd love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like. All right, bye for now. As you get towards 700 videos, you got to keep changing things up. Today, we're, uh, we've got green trees. I thought I'd be camouflaged. How's it working? And just before we end this video, I wanted to touch on this statement here we can see from Canon. Through the further development of CMOS image sensors, Canon will break new ground in the world of imaging. We can see there Canon has no plans to stop the advancement of developing sensors.